Hello friends, hi. Uh, I was uh, studying uh, the role of clozapine today and uh, it's a very useful medication to have and to be able to rely on when nothing else is working uh, for your patient that has schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. In fact, clozapine or clozaril, and it has a lot of other brand names also like Fazaclo. There's about 20 different names under which it's marketed in the world. Uh, when you uh, use the uh, clozapine, it really has a remarkable benefit. And uh, so it's worth knowing about. So let's uh, discuss this uh, wonderful medication. Uh, it, is, uh, it was actually manufactured back in the 1950s, I think 1956. And, uh, and then it was uh, tested in Germany and Europe in the 60s. And uh, initial trials didn't show much benefit, but uh, later trials did find benefit. Uh, like with any new medication, they have to work out the dosage. And they started using it over there. And it came to Europe in the early 70s. But around 1972, there were a few, well, there were cases, especially in Finland, where people had uh, developed agranulocytosis. And uh, the United States, you know, was wary because of the thalatomide disaster that had uh, uh, been related to focomilia, absence of limbs, very gross teratogenic effect. So the FDA was uh, justifiably very anxious and they basically prohibited the use of uh, a clozapine in the United States in 1972 or somewhere around there in the mid-70s, 1975 perhaps. And then it was gone for almost a decade or more then the late 1980s, uh, it came back under supervised uh, guidance. And uh, when I started my residency in 1989, uh, it was being used with some of the chronic, mentally ill, schizophrenic patients at uh, Austin State Hospital. And, uh, you know, I got to monitor some of them and you know the, remar the remarkable thing was that these chronically ill, mentally ill patients, they were started on clozapine and they got better. And then they went on home visits and they would come in, they would check in, return after their home visits. And I was a new resident and uh, you know, I seen the, the really uh, sick patients with their symptoms and then and these patients that came in from their home visits would come. And it was hard to actually tell that they were suffering from schizophrenia. It was that good. Well, at least some of them, it really made a very big difference in their life, a very big difference in terms of reducing their symptoms. And furthermore, it seemed to affect some, uh, ameliorate some deeper pathology that schizophrenia causes like uh, the negative affect, the cognitive issues that come with it. So I was impressed back then. Uh, however, it's uh, been reserved for use only for refractory patients. This is not always uh, the case everywhere. I've seen where Psychiatrists do use it in low doses, actually, lower doses than here, and combine it with the, the typical agents as well in order to harness some of the beneficial effects of it and also not use a high dose and uh, thereby hopefully avoiding uh, some of the more serious side effects. Speaking of which, we should talk about the side effects. So clozaril, the clozapine or clozaril, the most serious of the side effects is uh, agranulocytosis. And this occurs in about 1% of the people. So for that reason, 
a CVC is ordered at baseline and then once a week for first six months and then every two weeks for the next six months and then once a month after a year of stability without neutropenia or suppression of the white blood cell count. So uh, the thing that you're looking for is the absolute neutrophil count. And these are uh, the granulated uh, uh, white blood cells uh, that uh, fight off uh, bacterial infections. So, um, so you uh, want to keep that ANC absolute neutrophil count 1500 or above. And uh, if it slips to below 1500, you increase the frequency of monitoring of their WBCs uh, to three times a week until it gets better. And if it falls below 1000, you should withhold the uh, uh, clozapine. Those are the generic guidelines. Specifics may vary here and there. Uh, if somebody has benign ethnic neutropenia, which is like the naturally have low white blood cell counts and this occurs in some African-American patients and some patients from the Middle East and some Caucasians also but uh, if uh, they have neutropenia that's benign ethnic neutropenia uh, you are you can uh, relax the parameters a little bit so and uh, it, you, it's important for you to be aware of this so that you don't prematurely discontinue a very useful and potentially life-saving treatment. So anyway, the uh, white blood cell counts are monitored. The other uh, side effects that can be dangerous include uh, uh, constipation, paralytic ileus, uh, fecal impaction. Uh, it can actually uh, be lethal when they have severe uh, bowel obstruction. So that's something that the nurses monitor for and the patients also taught to monitor for it. And they're taught to use uh, laxatives and other interventions to prevent that side effect. In the first uh, month, uh, there's also a risk of uh, inflammation of the heart, uh, inflammatory cardiomyopathy, as you keep a watch on their vitals, if their pulse rate is going up, then uh, uh, you watch for it, you check their troponin levels, the C-reactive proteins, those may be elevated also, look for slight febrile response. If that's going on, then you have to you know, pull back on the clozapine, because uh, that can be potentially fatal as well. So uh, this is the reason that uh, this medication, although very useful, is held in reserve and is used for only those that are truly refractory. By this, mean, uh, this we mean that they have failed uh, two different antipsychotic trials and uh, they failed two different antipsychotic trials for adequate dose and adequate duration. So you, uh, how do you start this? So usually the starting dose is 12.5 once or twice a day. And you can titrate it up by 25 milligrams uh, once a day until you get a dose of about uh, 300 milligrams. Uh, it's, if you can do it, it's better to go slow, to raise it only by like 50 milligrams every four days. And uh, in about a couple of weeks, you should get an adequate dosage going, which will start to show some benefits. The range of uh, effective doses varies um, significantly. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, the clozapine is very useful. It helps with the mood, anxiety, their cognition, their negative symptoms, uh, impulsivity, addictions, and it can actually lower the suicidal impulses that some patients have.
so it, it uh, helps in saving them from the, those kind of impulses as well. So it decreases suicidal ideations. Uh, they like it. it, when they tolerate it, they do really well. And uh, uh, it's about, uh, you know, 25 to 50 percent more effective than the nearest antipsychotic. So when you have a treatment refractory in a schizophrenic patient or a schizoaffective disorder patient, it is truly a godsend. So it's worth trying uh, when other things are not working. You can use, uh, it has a risk for like inducing seizures at the higher doses also. So uh, drowsiness is another side effect, orthostatic hypotension, like when they get up suddenly it can make them potentially dizzy. Slow titration uh, may prevent can prevent that. Um, uh, Silurea or excessive drooling is uh, almost uh, universal. It's almost like 30 to 80 percent as those are the range that's given that it is a problem in, the percentage of patients that it's a problem in. And it's really annoying. Um, and it has to do with the, their direct stimulation of the muscarinic M4 receptor in the salivary glands. Uh, Treatment-wise, uh, uh, Cogentin and doesn't seem to work that well. And if besides, then you have to worry about additive uh, uh, constipating side effect of cogentin. You actually should avoid that. Um, it can, um, you know, there's like topical anticholinergics uh, like aprotropium, atrovent. Uh, sometimes people use it sublingually once or twice a day. Um, and uh, maybe lower the dose if there's nothing else works. Give them a towel. And um, you know, uh, and they can learn to cope with it. You know, dab the um, uh, the side of their mouth if they're drooling, and uh, and uh, control that side effect that way. But it is a problem for some patients. Uh, once you get them stabilized, the key is to just maintain them on it. And you know, their mental state improves enough to where they actually become much more cooperative. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, they almost, uh, you know, uh, may appear normal to you. So uh, do that, um, work with them, educate their family. If there is an episode of uh, neutropenia, you can reduce the dose, taper it down, and do, increase the monitoring. And there's something called a granulocyte colony stimulating factor that's used. You obviously need to consult or work closely with the um, uh, a primary care doctor or an internist so that you can um, uh, get, uh, you know, you can uh, refer them for treatment of any medical complication that may arise. So uh, that's a little bit about clozapine. It's a great uh, tool, great medication, and hopefully they'll develop a medication that is equally effective without some of these very um, concerning side effect that the doctors have to watch carefully for. Uh, anyway, it was uh, good to uh, talk to you. And so, yeah, let me let you take a look at the evening. So, it's uh, dusky, it's about 5.30. It's unusually dark. It's been uh, not as hot, thanks to that. And that's a useful, side effect of all this suit in the air but yeah that's what it is all right okay take care bye